We are live on Facebook. Hi everyone on Facebook, how are you? And we've also got the um, <clears throat> camera going for the YouTube upload. So hi everyone on YouTube. Nice to see you all again. And welcome back to Q&A Friday. So I hope everyone has had a great week and uh, you've had some good rides. Uh, weather in Australia has been uh, has been particularly challenging this week. We had our coldest December day in 50 years here. That was yesterday and today isn't much better. Okay, so for today we have a couple of questions to answer. Don't forget that if you've got your questions, uh, put them in the comments below and I will be able to choose from your questions for next week. Okay, so let's get started. We've had a couple of questions via Facebook. Do you use side reins? Um, and uh, if yes, why and what's the correct way to use them? I, I do use side reins, but I'm not a massive lunger. I like training the horses on their back, but at the same time, you know, lunging has a really important place uh, in building the horse up, promoting a good work ethic and a good work effort. Um, so yeah, definitely on the lunge, I, I will have something on the horse, whether it's side reins or a dagog, uh, or a bungee so I'll have something on the horse unless you know unless there's a really good reason not to so um, for example a, a really good reason not to is that Leo uh, my top horse he leans he, he'll lean on anything so he'll I mean you can't a horse can't really lean on a dagog for the amount of lunging I do with Leo it's it's not worth it and you know his train his training is so high level that he doesn't need the dagog to um, uh, you know promote anything he's really getting lunged as a, a brain free exercise I suppose so yeah so I don't put anything on him um, and and I've been saying de gog but I also mean that de gog and shambon they're essentially the same things and you can use those terms interchangeably that's fine I find most of the time and you know like this is this is a generalization there there certainly are exceptions and I've had exceptions in my stable but most of the time um, if you put side reins on it will help the horse go into a correct frame it helps them use their back more and come through with their hind legs a little bit more while you're lunge there's a few um, caveats on that I never put the lunge rein on too short so if the horse is at halt I will test the length of the lunge rein to see if the nose is on the vertical um, if the nose is tucked under too much, you know, they're way, they're way too short. Um, you want the nose on the vertical at the halt. And then what will happen is as you go into the walk and the trot and then the canter, the nose will push forward uh, in front of the vertical and in, you know, that's fine with me. Um, because actually you want the horse reaching for the bit um, and, and, you know, reaching forward with the mouth and the face and the jaw. So, um, so yeah, you don't want your uh, side reins too short. The other thing you need to watch out for is if your horse is, um, you know, particularly elastic, if the horse is, of course, the, every horse will have its supple side and its strong side. So you may need to adjust the length of your side reins accordingly. If you're lunging your horse on its strong side, which is also its stiff side, it might not want to bend quite as freely that way. So you might have that inside one a little bit shorter. But similarly, uh, if it's on the supple side, you might want to have that inside rein a little bit longer. So it really does depend how the horse responds to the, or reacts to the side reins as to how you need to use them. But I mean, uh, of all the tools, I find side reins are the easiest because, you know, there's two contact, there's two connection points. Um, you can clip them on, clip them off. So, and I always warm up without them. Always, always, always. So the horse always gets to do walking on the lunge through between three and five circles each way. And then I'll attach the side reins and I would then start, you know, start working them. Something that does sometimes happen and it happened in my stable is that I broke one. So I was left with one lunge rein Sorry, one side rein. Uh, if ever this happens, um, if you find yourself with one side rein and you don't really know what to do with it, put it on the outside. Um, and that really teaches the horse to um, take the outside rein, to 
uh, you know, uh, pick up its back and bend and really carry itself into the outside rein um, without any interference from the inside rein at all. So yeah, if you do find yourself with one, pop it on the outside and uh, you'll, you know, it's a bit of a training assistance um, in its own right. The other thing you need to be careful of is the elastic in your uh, side reins. If it's a bit old and perished, it gets a bit, you know, stretchy and a bit rubbery. It's nice to have a bit of give. You know, you want the horse, when it, hit, when it hits the bit, you want it to know that it, you know, it's hit the bit and it needs to do something. You don't want the horse to hit the bit and for it to be really, you know, a really negotiable uh, place in, in the horse's frame. Um, you know, because then what will happen is if you've got really stretchy lunge, uh, side reins, you'll hop on, the horse will come in frame and it will treat your hands the same way. Um, and, you know, riders have more than enough to do with their hands without then having to teach the horse the difference between a stretchy floppy side rein um, and where the, where the frame is meant to be under saddle. Um, so yeah, if your side reins have got, you know, loose elastic um, because they're a bit old or the elastic's, you know, poorer quality, uh, the best thing you can do is tie a knot in the, in the side rein right where that elastic is and it just takes out the give, uh, you know, takes out most of the give um, and then ideally, you know, get the elastic replaced. The other thing I have used um, is a bungee and the bungee is like one long, one great big long elastic cord that um, goes from the girth on one side through the bit over the pole to the bit on the other side and then back to the girth um, on the opposite side. So it's one big long cord um, and that, I found that was really good on young horses with good mouths. If your horse gets a bit smart uh, with the bungee um, or with the side reins, um, so, you know, most of the time it's just better to ditch them. And that way you're not having to, you're not creating more, prob <clears throat> more problems that you then have to fix under saddle. And then the Dagog or Chambon, I use a, um, I use a Chambon fairly regularly. Um, mainly because I've got uh, young horses coming back in and a, um, an older horse doing rehab. So I like them to be able to put their head as low as they like. Um, and of course with the Shambon, when they put their head low, they can reach forward with their nose. And I find that's a really good way to encourage the back to move and swing and, and start to come up and carry. The uh, Shambon is really good for that. Again, don't let it get too tight. If the horse, if the horse's nose is tucked, you know, inside the vertical, just you know, pull pull it up and make it longer, um, because you you absolutely do not ever want the the nose. You don't want to train the horse to think that the nose should be um, behind the vertical. Really be careful about encouraging the horse to um, come behind the vertical. You don't want that at all. Um, you are only going to create problems. Um, that you will then have to solve once you're in the saddle and you know there's enough things to do once you're uh, once you're in the saddle and oh, and also with the shambon and there's lots of different um there's lots of different ways you can use it and there's um depending on your depending on the way it's made um it can have lot you know you there's lots of places to clip it and lots of ways you can have the um have the rope <clears throat> going through all the hooks um and again, what I often do is set up the outside rein, the outside rein on the Shambon, um, and just have the inside rein coming straight from the bridle down to the bit, but the outside rein would be coming from the bridle to the bit and then sometimes uh, onto the clip in the middle of the chest. I think, if that, is that the right way I'm imagining it? Yeah. And in that way, again, you've, you've set up the outside rein and you're encouraging the horse to go into the outside rein and, you know, use its back and um, swing with its body. And, you know, that's what we're trying to achieve in the saddle. So um, it's a really good opportunity to set it up uh, in the while you're lunging or the complication of adding, you know, a rider in the saddle. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's uh, side reins and um, if you've got any more questions on side reins, I'm happy to clarify. And our next question is, 
from a rider who has recently competed and she asks what to do when your quiet horse <laughs> becomes a complete muppet after approaching the judge's car before entering the arena <laughs> asking for a friend she says all right so essentially um you know you're out of competition you've approached the judge you're about to enter the arena so your warm-up went well and as soon as it looks imminent that you're going to enter the arena, the horse starts becoming unsettled or the, you know, I'm sure many of you have experienced uh, this. Um, another really common one is that everything's fine. And as soon as you go down the first center line, it starts to fall apart. So the thing to ask yourself or the thing to think about is uh, what's the rider doing uh, at this point? So, um, you know, before in your warm up and when you're training at home, there's nothing is imperative. You don't have to stop at that market. You don't have to trot at that market or canter at that one or turn at this one or blah, blah, blah. So as soon as you compete, uh, you know, all of these things become imperative. Plus you've got to remember uh, a test, you know, you've got to remember where you're going um, and what you're doing. So there's a lot more pressure on the rider as soon as you've presented to the judge or as soon as you've entered an A. If you don't have a huge wealth of experience when you're competing, as a rider, the things that we have to think about as we're going into the arena, they become, you know, that, that's pressure. And even though you may not be nervous or, you know, you might be completely calm about the situation, um, just the added extra stuff you have to do, it is a pressure and you need to recognize that it's going to make a difference. Um, and this is why I advocate, you know, knowing your test inside out. You should have practiced that test at least five times in the preceding fortnight. Um, even, you know, even better, I would start practicing it. As soon as you can do it, I would start practicing it, uh, you know, and then after six to eight months, you should really know this test um, by heart so that you don't have to think about it so much. And that way, you know, your brain can focus on, you know, how's my horse feeling? Um, you know, and you can start thinking about what the, you know, any of the naughty things that your horse does or any of the, you know, the evasions that you normally have to fix or work with in your everyday training. You want to be able to get on top of those. You want to be able to stay on top of those when you're doing your dressage test. Uh, just like you do when you're doing your training. Also something to think about is what's your routine from when you decide that it's, you know, it's your turn and you're approaching the arena, you have to present to the judge. What is your routine? As soon as you enter at A, there's, you know, you've got a routine that, that's imperative, you have to do it. But as you approach the arena, do you always circle left first? Do you always circle right first? Do you have a plan in your head? Um, and of course, the the judges aren't always ready so do you have plan b in your head um, you know if you approach the if your plan is to do one lap of the arena and then one circle down the bottom and then in what happens if the judge isn't ready are you prepared to go around again plan b could be to go around again or to do uh, more circles down the bottom or to go around again stop up the top turn around come back you know like if you have as much of a routine in your mind that um, covers the entire time you are near the competition arena, you know, you're, you're not going to be wondering, it's not going to be a thing that you have to worry about and that you have to think about. For me, uh, if the judge isn't ready the first time, I'll keep going around the arena, but I'll, for example, I'll go down the right hand long side, present to the judge, and then I'll do a, a I'll turn around um, you know, if I'm doing a pirouette, that's fine, or a, um, a little turn on the haunches, that's fine. And then I'll go back down that same side, um, coming back the other way. If the judge isn't ready, then I keep going the same way and I go all the way around the arena. It's very rare. Sometimes I'll do a circle. Um, and sometimes I, sometimes I have to do a circle so that I can take off um, my glasses because I like to do the test without any glasses on. You know, in Australia, when you warm up, of course, you need your sunglasses um, nearly all the time. So, um, and that way, what I've done with that method is that I've shown the horse the arena with its left eye, and then I've turned it around and I've shown the horse the arena with my right eye, with its right eye. That's plan A. And then if, you know, if I have more time, if the judge isn't ready yet, I will keep going around the arena and then I can start you know, playing with a bit of leg yield or shoulder in or, you know, changes or, you know, a bit of half pass, whatever I need to play with 
um, just to make sure the horse is you know awake and listening but I've always got that in my mind and I have my routine so what I'd encourage you to do is to have you know have your routine as soon as you leave the warm-up arena and you're heading towards the competition arena what is it that you're going to do what is your routine and what that does is that it just keeps you and your horse rolling so that there's no big psychological change between the outside of the arena and the inside of the arena um, because of course a big psychological change can manifest itself in you know either a stiff rider or stiff elbows or you might you, you know even as simple as holding the reins just a little bit tighter these are all big differences for the horse and you, you know you want to make sure that the horse stays just as relaxed on its way into the arena as what it was in the warm-up i'd encourage you to develop a develop a pattern um, and and keep it and you know find what works for you and you you, get, you you'll need to test it out so go you know at every competition try one for a while and if you think oh i could probably do better you know change it up and uh, have another go so yeah give that a go and see if that makes any changes the other thing to remember look if you think of nothing else smile and it's not just to tell the judge that you're having a great time and my horse is doing absolutely everything I asked no resistances to see here when you smile it relaxes your the muscles in your neck and your shoulders and then that starts to relax the other muscles in your body so even if you go down that center line with some kind of manic crazed smile on your face that would make me happier than if you didn't have a smile on your face at all and it, it sounds so simple and so mickey mouse um, but it, it works a treat and if you know if i ever see anyone if I ever see anyone about to go into the arena and you know they want some help that's what I'll tell them and it sounds like rubbish um, but it, it really does work and if and that's what I do when I find if I'm in a tough situation or you know I've found myself in in a bit of a position that I need to work my you know need to work my butt off to get out of I'll smile I'll sit sit back you know I think about the wall behind me and I smile lean against the wall behind me and just get on with it um, and the horse will feel that difference in you. Don't believe that the horse can't feel that. It definitely can um, because of course it can also feel uh, when you get stiff or a little bit tense or hold your breath, <laughs> which is another one. Um, yeah, so I'd encourage you to do those things and, uh, and report back. You know, if, you have, if you've never had a routine between the warm up arena and the competition arena, you know develop one for yourself and report back and it's something to practice at home um, even though you know even though you might not be in a situation where you where you can go around your arena pretend you're going around you know just with the inside you know on the inside of the arena run through your routine at home so that just like your tests uh, it becomes second nature uh, and you don't have to think about uh, what you're doing and be really careful and especially this happens in more regional uh, clubs or, or where you're you know really familiar with um, familiar with a club um, is that sometimes riders like to stop and have a bit of a chat I wouldn't do that <laughs> because you, what you're doing is you're taking yourself out you know you've, you've spent however long setting yourself up for this moment where you're about to enter an A um, and by stopping and having a chat you've both let your horse go you've let yourself go um, and then you're going your brain's leaving and having a conversation with the judge and then you have to do all that work to pick it all back up and get yourself back in the zone so I really discourage you um, you know you don't have to stop and talk to the judge it's um, it's definitely you know it's definitely not a rule um, and in fact you know if you have intentions of competing at a state champs or you know at big shows they don't like you to stop at all so um, you know presenting to the judge actually means that you've just trotted past so that the penciler or the judge can see your um, number and double check that against the draw if you do struggle with this um, with you know a little bit of tension before your test don't stop and talk to the judge um, just keep going um, yeah so hopefully all of this has uh, has inspired you to build your, you know to develop your own routine before uh, your next comp 
and um, and hopefully the uh, info on the side reins um, and the other lunging gear is helpful also. Okay, well I hope everyone is uh, getting lots of riding done and your training and working towards your next goal. So it was lovely to see everyone today and don't forget we are on Facebook. Um, if you turn on the notifications up there on the three dots, you can turn on the notifications um, for the page and that way um, when the video when the next video comes up you will be able to see it straight away and YouTube is the same if you turn on the notifications uh, you'll be able to find out straight away when the next video is coming up okay everyone um, well it is Friday afternoon so I hope you have a fabulous weekend and uh, wherever you are I hope the weather is kind and you get lots of riding in all right everyone I will talk to you all soon see you later YouTube